Hey, how's it going everybody? Coach Tickety here, and in this video we're going to be talking about DPS counters for every hero in Overwatch 2. Now since the DPS line boasts the most heroes out of any role in Overwatch 2, there's obviously going to be multiple ways to counter heroes in a game this complex. But for today, we're going to be focusing on just single hero counters so you'll have something to focus on and a go-to pick just in case any of these heroes pose a problem to you in your future games. And if you're looking for more content like this, more educational guides, more ways to improve your game, look no further than the Game Leap website. You will find hundreds of Overwatch 2 guides as well as plenty of guides for other games from top level coaches. This is a great way to give yourself an advantage when trying to improve your play. So do yourself a favor and click this link now to get your membership started. Starting off in the tank line, to counter D.Va, you might want to try out Mei. D.Va's Matrix won't stop any of the damage from your primary fire, and its slowing effects can force D.Va to boost away to safety. When looking to use your wall, try to focus on D.Va's allies with less mobility. This will force D.Va to fly over the wall to try and help them. And speaking of, your wall is a great counter to D.Va's bomb, her ultimate, or you can just use Ice Block to save yourself if you're the only one caught in it. Next up, Doomfist, and you might want to try out Echo as a counter. Echo's mobility in her flight should allow her to easily escape any of Doomfist's cooldowns. All the spam damage from your primary fire and from your sticky bomb should allow you to poke out Doom from range, maybe preventing him from setting up his engage in the first place, and look for those opportunities to catch Doom below half HP and finish him off with a good focusing beam. Since he's less tanky than other tanks on the roster, this should make for an easy kill. Next up, Junker Queen, and fitting with the lore, you can try out Junkrat as a counter. All of Junkrat's damage can help force Junker Queen out of the front line, preventing a lot of her value, but if she ever does get too close, you've got your minds to disrupt her engages. You can also try setting up defensive traps against the Junker Queen. She might just run right into it in the front line, and it can even interrupt her movement when she's trying to use her ultimate. When trying to counter Orisa, maybe give Tracer a try. Tracer's mobility makes it easy to harass Orisa at mid-ranges, dancing around her cooldowns and primary fire. This type of playstyle is great for forcing Orisa to play defensively and maybe even push her out of positions. Or you can use her mobility to just get around Orisa entirely and focus on other members. She won't be able to keep up with no mobility of her own. When looking at Ramatra, you can think of Farah as a potential counter. Ramatra gains speed while he's using Nemesis form, or worse his ultimate annihilation, but he can't run up, so Farah should have no problem keeping him at range. Use this range to apply consistent pressure to him during a team fight. You can even fly directly over him to get around his shield if you need to, but if you're looking to get aggressive and maybe all in with a barrage play, make sure you can hit a flank and get behind him so he's not able to block all of your damage from the front. Next we've got Reinhardt and Bastion as a counter. Just the sheer amount of damage that Bastion puts out is often way too much for Reinhardt's shield to handle, despite how tanky it is. Bastion's also one of the tankier DPS in the game, since he's got extra HP and armor as well as damage reduction whenever he uses sentry form. This should keep you safe in the front line, allowing you to apply all that pressure to Rhine. And since many teams like to group up behind a Rhine shield, you can use that to your advantage when using your ultimate trying to hit multiple targets. If an enemy Roadhog is proving too much to handle, you might want to try out Soldier 76. Try to poke out Roadhog from range and keep a safe distance away from his chain hook. This can force him out of position or at the very least make him take a breather. But if he ever does get too close, you've got Sprint ready to go to get yourself somewhere safe. And as long as you're staying safe from his chain hook, there's really no counterplay that Roadhog is available to deny your tack visor. He can't stop any damage going through to his teammates and should lead to a strong play. For countering Sigma, I'll recommend Cassidy. Your damage is great for poking, but it won't likely find a kill against Sigma, but it can be good for breaking his shield, making him redeploy it or give up space. If you find a reason to get aggressive on an enemy Sigma, maybe after he's used his kinetic grasp or after you break his shield, you can look to burst him down with your fan the hammer and magnetic grenade for easy damage. And don't forget that when Sigma's using his gravitic flux, he can't use his shield or his kinetic grasp either. This means your dead eye can be a fantastic counter to this ultimate. Being up in the air with your ultimate going could allow you to kill Sigma himself since he won't be able to use those defensive cooldowns or might just give you new sight lines to his allies in the backline. And on top of all of that, you also got damage reduction with your ultimate, so it should be harder to focus you down as well. This is a great counterplay for you to look for. Alright, next up we've got Winston and Reaper to counter. Pretty straightforward here, Reaper's shotguns will thrive against Winston's gigantic head hitbox, and the mobility from your teleport can allow you to aggressively apply pressure to Winston's team, especially if Winston uses his jump defensively. And if you ever find yourself getting primaled by the Winston, you can either just try to lifesteal through it by shooting back, you can wraith yourself to safety, or if he knocks you off the map, you can even just TP back. Next we've got Wrecking Ball, and again another obvious one, Sombra to counter. Simply put, Put, hacking Wrecking Ball means he doesn't get to play the game anymore. It completely denies all of his game plans. And if that weren't enough, his gigantic hitbox makes it very easy to farm EMPs off of him once he is hacked. And don't forget that EMP will actually be a good counter to Wrecking Ball's mines as well. They won't get destroyed by the EMP effect, but while they're hacked, they won't trigger their explosion. Finally, in the tank line, we've got Zarya and Sojourn to counter. You'll want to make sure you're timing your burst damage from your railgun around Zarya's bubbles. This should be easy because of how predictable they are. And since Zarya is woeful, 
fully locked into short range, usually in the front line, she can be a very easy tank to farm your railgun off of. Just be careful about shooting those bubbles. And if Zarya does get too close, or if you're just trying to avoid her grabs, make sure you're using your slide to get yourself to safety, hopefully landing on high grounds where Zarya can't keep up. Moving on to DPS, we've got Ash, and I'll recommend Widowmaker to counter. Not many characters in the game can win the range duel against an Ash, especially if she's pocketed by a Mercy, which is fairly common. But Widowmaker's weapon should allow her to play at extremely long ranges that are safe from Ash's headshots, dynamites, or even her ultimate bomb. And keep in mind in this matchup, even if you can't get the kill every single time, just forcing Ash into a more defensive position is strong value. Alright, moving on to Bastion and Genji as a counter. All of Genji's mobility with his wall climb, dash, and double jump can make him very hard for Bastion to hit, even while he's using his sentry mode. And when you finally do decide to go all in on Bastion, you've got your deflect to survive and potentially counterplay all the focus fire that he'll be putting out. When it comes to ultimates, not even a healthy, tanky, high HP Bastion wants to try and face Genji's Dragon Blade, you should be able to finish him with enough time. Looking at Cassidy, you can try Ash as a counter. The main counter here just being that you have better range than Cassidy does. You'll apply more pressure consistently both to him and potentially to his team. Thanks to this range advantage, Cassidy should probably find himself grouping up in the front line where you can look to punish him with dynamites instead. And since Cassidy has no real mobility available to him, you can look to punish him specifically with a bob that cuts off his escape angle since he won't be able to escape that pressure very easily. When looking to counter Echo, I'll recommend Soldier 76. The nature of your weapon allows you to consistently poke at Echo while she's in the sky, which might not always find a kill, but should force her to play defensively. The self-healing from your biotic field should keep you healthy even if you find yourself alone while fighting Echo. And your attack visor can guarantee a kill if you can catch her right after she uses her flight in open space. Alternatively, you can try to use it as a counter to Echo's ultimate duplicate so you can kill her before she charges her new ultimate. If you're dealing with a problematic Genji, you might want to try out Cassidy to counter him. Poke him out at range whenever you can to try and force defensive uses of any of his cooldowns, but if he does go in, make sure you're playing around his deflect. You don't want to end up shooting yourself, or worse, sticking yourself with a magnetic grenade, since that will quickly end the duel and probably not in your favor. This matchup is all about patience, you need to be able to outplay his cooldowns. And if you're looking to counter his ultimate Dragon Blade, Deadeye is not a bad option. The damage reduction you get while casting your ultimate means you can survive more Dragon Blade swings than most characters, and since you'll be constantly locking on to Genji while he's ulting, he won't have much time to try and secure the kill. Again here, just watch out for that deflect. Moving on to the other Shimada brother Hanzo, I'll recommend Echo to counter. It can be very difficult to hit a flying target with projectiles such as Hanzo's arrows, and since Echo has very strong spam damage herself, you can usually outtrade Hanzo at range. Use this to force him off of an aggressive angle or just to apply more pressure to his team in the front line. When looking to all in against Hanzo, be careful about going too fast. Make sure you're getting some early damage in from your primary fire or sticky bombs and then trying to finish them off fast with a focusing beam. Spending too much time against Hanzo in close range can get you outplayed by storm arrows or just headshot out of nowhere. When looking to counter Junkrat, I'll recommend Farah. Pretty straightforward here, the fact that you can stay airborne consistently makes you very safe from Junkrat's damage. Some Junkrat players might try to meet you in the air, so when this happens make sure you're able to stay near walls and use Concussive Blast to get yourself away from them. Other than that, just make sure you're looking to hit high priority targets from midair, and when Junkrat uses his Rip Tire, you should have no problem avoiding it and might even find an angle to kill Junk himself while he's casting it. Next up is Mei and Bastion to counter. Mei needs a lot of pressure in the front line from her primary fire and her wall walls to find most of her success. Just the sheer amount of damage that Bastion puts out can help deny all of this. And again, since Bastion is a relatively tanky DPS member, he can survive poke damage from icicles and even some rush attempts, especially while using his sentry form. And while Blizzard is a very threatening ultimate to every character in the game, Bastion can give himself a little bit of a boost with his grenade to try and escape the radius. When trying to deal with Farah, you'll of course want a hit scan, but I'll recommend Ash specifically here. Since Farahs will usually like to find themselves flying around with a Mercy pocket, Ash is burst damage and potential two-shot kills on either Farah or Mercy are usually the best for countering her. You've also got Coach Gun to keep yourself safe if Farah gets too close or if she tries to boop you off the map, and Bob is a great ultimate to apply pressure to someone like Farah, opening up new aggressive sight lines that they might not be able to avoid. Next up is Reaper and Hanzo to counter. You've got a heavy range advantage here, so you should make sure you're keeping Reaper at an arm's length whenever possible. To make this easier on yourself, you can use Sonic Arrow to scout out where Reaper might be hiding or trying to flank or setting up a TP play. And Speaking of his teleport, you should try to line up a headshot as Hanzo to punish him for going for this very predictable animation. You've got a very short window to hit this, but if you get your timing down, it's a guaranteed kill. But if Reaper's posing a problem and closing the distance too readily, try to stay near walls to give yourself some height advantage and save your storm arrows to give yourself some close range burst damage to try and outplay him. And don't forget, it's not much, but you do 
have a little bit of mobility in your midair lunge, which can help you get outside of the radius of his ultimate or just away from his shotguns in general. To counter Sojourn, if she can be countered, I'll recommend you try out Echo. Time your aggressive flight patterns as Echo around the availability of Sojourn's railgun. Now that it takes a little bit longer to charge, this should be more easy to read. If you manage to hit a good amount of your sticky bombs on Sojourn, she'll likely be forced to slide defensively. This is good for denying space to her and maybe even limiting her playmaking potential as the fight goes on. The worst part of this matchup for Echo is definitely Sojourn's ultimate overclock, which basically turns her into the best hit scan character in the game. Make sure you've got defensive options available whenever she's got her ultimate up. Next up, Soldier 76, and to counter him, one of the only characters that can keep up with his sprint, Tracer. Use flank routes and strong positioning to get into close range and try to catch him off guard after he starts shooting at a different target, and even better after he's already used helix rockets. With his biggest burst damage out of the way, you can use your blinks to throw off his aim in the duel. Make sure you got as many as possible before you go all in. If you need to counter an enemy Sombra, Torbjorn is an easy choice. Torbjorn himself is very safe versus Sombra's hacks. Thanks to his armor and overload, he should even be able to survive EMP attempts. And setting up a defensive turret angle is the best counter in the game to Sombra's trying to hack your team. As long as the turret doesn't already have a target it's shooting at, whenever Sombra reveals herself to start a hack, it will instantly acquire the target and cancel the animation. And if Sombra does manage to catch your team in a big EMP, you can try to counter it with Molten Core, stopping the enemy team from following up and actually securing the kills. Next up is Symmetra and Farah to counter. As Farah, you should basically never be hit by any of Symmetra's damage in this matchup. You can always stay out of range and above her, making yourself very difficult to hit with Symmetra's projectiles. The predictable nature of Symmetra's teleport makes it easy for Farah to punish as well. You can just hit them with rockets, boop them out of position, or even just go for a barrage play if multiple people are using it. And if Symmetra is posing too big of a problem to your team, you can try booping her away from her target, denying a lot of her primary fire's damage. Next we've got Torbjorn, and I'd recommend Hanzo as a strong counter. You can very easily poke out Torbjorn's turrets with Hanzo's arrows, and if you ever find yourself in the duel, you should be able to use the burst from your storm arrows to come out on top. Just don't get caught off guard by the extra HP he gets from overload. In general though, you'll likely be keeping Torbjorn at range, since you can use verticality to keep yourself an advantage. When dealing with an enemy Tracer, you can try Mei as a counter. Your Icicles can one-shot Tracer if you hit them in the head, this should leave Tracer a little bit scared to try and engage on you. And while your walls won't directly deny Tracer since she has so much mobility, you can at least delay her aggression or force her to use blinks to get around it. And if you do find Tracer is focusing you as Mei, you've got Ice Block to keep yourself healthy, and you can even use it to outplay Tracer's Pulse Bomb. Finally in the DPS line, we've got Widowmaker and Genji as a counter. Use your mobility and flank routes to close the distance on an enemy Widow. Even if you can't get the kill every time, just forcing her out of position is very strong value. If you can catch her without her grapple available though, this will usually lead to a kill. And of course, if you can't close the distance, you can try and deflect a headshot right back at her to kill her at range. Alright, let's talk about supports, starting with Ana and Widowmaker as a counter. Since Ana will usually try to abuse her range and play in very safe positions, Widowmaker's range can put a lot of pressure on an unsuspecting Ana. And if you can catch her off guard while she's scoped in, it makes for a pretty easy headshot. And since you're playing at such extreme ranges, you're not usually worried about Ana's cooldowns. You shouldn't be able to be hit by her name and unless you're standing perfectly still, she probably won't be landing sleep darts on you. Next up, Baptiste and Sojourn to counter. Sojourn's mobility and small hitbox can make it very hard for Bap to shoot back with his hitscan weapon. But since Bap does offer so much healing to his team, you'll want to focus heavily on railguns that will secure kills, not just apply damage. Make sure you're focusing on the same targets as your teammates to make sure you can get through all that healing. And since many players will group up around Baptiste's immortality field or behind his ultimate amplification matrix, it makes for very strong disruptor shot value to either push them out of the way and not benefit from those cooldowns, or just apply a lot of damage to them. Next up is Brigida and Junkrat to counter. Brig usually needs to be in the front line or near it to find most of her value, whereas Junkrat's damage and all of his disruption can force her out of the front line. In addition to that, Brigida doesn't offer that much healing if she's not consistently brawling through a team fight, so she won't be able to keep up with your damage output. And while Rally is a nice defensive ultimate, it really won't do much against a well-timed rip tire. Just make sure Brig's not blocking it with her shield if you're trying to kill her directly. Next up is Kiriko, who is another very difficult character to counter, but I think Ash might be your best bet here. You can of course outdamage her at range as long as you're not getting consistent hit in the head by her kunai, and if she is trying to play more like an assassin getting on top of you, you've got coach gun to keep her at range. The AoE and burst damage that you apply from headshots and from your dynamite procs can be very difficult for a Kiriko to outheal, and might force her to burn her Suzu early. And when you notice Kiriko looking for an aggressive ultimate in her Katsune rush, you can try to use Bob as a counter. Use it to knock up their frontliners to slow their movement and to deny a lot of their aggression since they'll have to deal with Bob before they keep moving forward. Next up is Lucio, and I'll recommend Sombra to counter. If you find yourself dealing with one of those pesky red 
Reddit wall riding Lucio's always fragging in your backline, a simple hack will knock him off the wall and lead to easy follow up. But if you're playing against a more passive or team oriented Lucio who are focusing on a rush composition, you should probably focus on hacking frontline members to deny their rush potential. Since enemies will need to group up to benefit from Lucio's auras, EMP can be a great punish for this type of playstyle, or it can be used to counter Lucio's sound barrier entirely. Moving on to Mercy and Soldier 76 to counter. You won't always find the kill in this matchup, but consistent pressure is very important to make sure that Mercy has to think defensively. Make sure Mercy isn't able to self-heal too much by applying consistent shots from your hitscan weapon. Mercies will tend to play more aggressively when they're using their ultimate Valkyrie, and you can punish this with a well-timed tack visor to burn them through all of their self-healing no problem. Next up is Moira and Torbjorn to counter. Torb won't really be threatened by Moira's damage output, and neither will his turret. You shouldn't always focus on trying to kill Moira in this matchup, but instead focus on applying consistent pressure to an entire team throughout a teamfight. This will force Moira into a bit of a heal bot playstyle. And if you force your enemies to group up to benefit from Moira's close range AoE healing, then Molten Core is a great punish to this playstyle even during Coalescence. Again, you might not always kill her, but you'll deny important space to her and her team and stop them from benefiting from Moira's kit. And finally, Zen Zenyatta, and Tracer to counter. Another somewhat obvious one here, Zenyatta's lack of mobility and squishiness and very easy to hit hitbox makes for basically target practice to focus down. You should be able to consistently one clip Zenyatta when playing Tracer into him. With all your mobility, it should be no problem to close the distance on his positions, just make sure you don't get too close and get kicked away since that does do a surprising amount of damage. And if you're ever worried about a Zenyatta's transcendence for the upcoming team fight, you can try to focus him down early, maybe even trying to hit him with a pulse bomb to force it out of him. This should be high priority for you as a Tracer player to make sure that other ultimates coming through, maybe a Genji's Dragon Blade, find more success once Trance is off the field. Like I mentioned, there are many ways to play every single hero and many any different heroes in Overwatch 2's cast, so these are not the only ways to counter these heroes you might find in your games, just a few recommended picks from me. So let me know what your favorite DPS counters are, what's your go-to pick in any given situation? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're looking for more content like this, more educational guides, more ways to improve your game, look no further than the Game Leap website. You will find hundreds of Overwatch 2 guides as well as plenty of guides for other games from top level coaches. This is a great way to give yourself an advantage when trying to improve your play. So do yourself a favor and click this link now to get your membership started.